Praise the Lord and good morning. What a day to live. God is great and greatly to be praised because he has given us another great day to live and experience him and serve him and speak for him. Now today I would like to speak to you about five principles to be a legacy builder. Now you heard this expression, you keep hearing it very often. Build up on the legacy of your father. Build up on the legacy of your pastor. And what does that mean? That means to be a legacy builder, one has to be adventurous, a great achiever who has achieved enormous things and things that are beyond his natural ability. And by faith, I mean, like Moses, Joshua, and uh, Elijah, you know, Elisha lived on the, uh, and built up his life and ministry on the legacy of Elijah. That's what I meant. And of course, we have great rich people in the world who leave a legacy to their children, like Tatas and Birlas and uh, today's businessmen, for their children to, eliminate, uh, to, to, to follow their footstep. Not just eating up what they have earned, but building on it and doing more adventurous, stepping out. No, to be a legacy builder, a legacy leadership is uh, possible when you operate outside of your comfort. And that means stepping out of our comfort zone. Peter is a good example. You remember when the, their ship that they were traveling was caught in a big, big storm which they could not manage. You know, suddenly they were frightened. Uh, by a figure coming towards them, walking over the troubled waters. And um, at, at the end, you know, Jesus told them, don't be afraid, it is I. And when they recognized it was Jesus, suddenly Peter spoke up, Jesus, if he, it is you, then allow me to come to you by walking over the water. And Jesus said, come. And immediately, Peter jumped into the water and he really started walking. Now that is adventurous faith. That is adventurous, you know, something that is impossible you are trying to do. And he did it. And that is the, what we need. In Proverbs chapter, uh, uh, Proverbs chapter, uh, chapter 13, verse 22 says, Thirteen twenty-two. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children, but a sinner's wealth is stored up for the righteous. You see that first portion up. A good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children for many generations, and that is he. He such a father is a legacy. And his legacy, his children have to follow. And uh, it, legacy is built on what you plan to do and plan to do today. And uh, fear is the absence of faith. Faith moves the hand of God. Now we need to understand that a legacy builder is he has certain qualities. Number one, he, has, uh, he is passionate. He's very passionate about what he does or what he wants to do. Like Joshua and Caleb, about whom we talked in our last meditation. They were passionate about the promise of God. They were passionate about the faithfulness of God. And they wanted to prove by taking a stand, and they took a stand against other 
ten friends who went with them to spy the land. Joshua and Caleb. And they were very passionate about what God has spoken to them, not what they have seen there. In spite of what they have seen, they were so passionate and believed in what God promised and that they stood on that. That is a legacy builder, no matter how impossible it sounds. We need to be passionate about what God says. If God has promised us, we need to be very passionate about our God and about his promises. Unless we are passionate, we will not achieve anything. They took a position, who these spies, about the land that was not popular. As a legacy builder, must take a position in what they believe. We have to take a position of what we believe. And then their faith in God whom they believed was so strong. In the person of God, understanding can, can wait, but obedience cannot. You don't try to understand your God and don't try to understand what he says. But the first thing is obedience, what God says. Enter, you go, you go. The rest God will do. That's, that, is, that is a passionate man. Apostle Paul was the best example of being very passionate about what God's call required him to be. And then... Always remember, revelation plus action is equal to manifestation. And a revelation minus action is frustration. So when you receive a revelation from God, then you act upon that revelation. Then you will see a manifestation of God's amazing power and display of his power. And then awareness of God's presence. And that must, be make, that must be strong. That you are well aware who walks with you, who is with you day and night. You, who is with you when you climb a mountain. Who is with you when you climb down into the valley. Who is walking with you when you are in the waters or in the fire. Remember God is there, an awareness. Joshua and Caleb were aware of God's presence with them. He is with us. Let us go forward. And let me end by saying, Joshua's statement reveals his posture of obedience. God will fight for us and he will give us the land. You obey, even if it doesn't make sense. That is passionate, being passionate about God and being passionate about his promises and being passionate about God's faithfulness and being passionate about God's business. And if God said, you do this, you do this. Though it may be dangerous, but with God, not only all things are possible, with God, you can never be a failure. God bless you as you live your life today. Great is our God. And serve him. Use your voice to speak. And let the promises of God hold you up. Be a legacy maker yourself. For your future generations will stand up and Praise God for you and speak about you to others. Oh, Holy Spirit of God, none of these things can be done without you in us and with us. So we call on your name. We need you. Come and fill us. Come and anoint us. Come and use us and use our voice to speak you about you to others. Amen.
God bless you. Let this be a great day for you. Amen.